that they have in there that's kind of helping see one car. The rest of the seeing and radar that Elon was talking about, they're going to be identifying hazards and things and putting them into a, a white list and black list of things that are, you know, this is an overpass, that's, you know, a sign on the side of the road, you know, that's a pop can ignore it, that sort of thing. For Beaver, take the ramp right. And I, I wasn't terribly clear if that's all like real time across the entire network, or are they going to be like little mini updates, like everybody's going to upload their logs at the end of the day and then download the next day, or if it's waiting till the next version. It didn't seem terribly clear on how now, frequent exit number 109. those updates Beaver, are going to be happening. Right. If you know, please comment in the comments below if you got any sources that say, because um, I know they keep talking about this this network learning and in point two I'm not miles, sure if it's real time. Right onto it's, West Main Street, then I kind of think it isn't yet, and that it might be uh, someday or eventually, but it's not not super clear. Now turn right onto West Main Street. So I'm pulling into the supercharger now. There's only four stations here at Beaver, Utah, and there's a Chevron. The Dairy Queen, a car wash, and this Timberline restaurant. There is actually a, a gas station here. I mean, uh, not a gas station, a trash can by the supercharger, which is actually uh, kind of rare. You think it'd be something that they'd have. The one that I was just at at Nephi, um, there was there was a restaurant there uh, and another gas station nearby, but there wasn't really anything immediately. Bye. Please ask questions if you're if you're um, watching this, because I can see them. I can see in the comments below. I see there's five people watching. I'll be right back. I'm gonna plug in. Actually, I'll, I'll take this with so you can you can see what it's like. <laughs> Charger. It is super easy. <laughs> like way faster than a gas station where you gotta get out the pump, you gotta swipe your card, you gotta enter your in your pin or your zip code, and then you gotta wait for it. Or, you know, just a few years ago, you had to go in and wait in the line. So, yeah, so now I'm charging at the supercharger. Uh, I drove in with 38 miles of range left. It's saying I need an hour to make it um, so my next leg of my trip, which is Las Vegas. Now, I don't really have to wait an hour here. In fact, it'll actually be quicker if I don't wait an hour because there's another supercharger. So this is the new interface for 8.0 and, uh, it's pretty cool. <laughs> I don't know if you can see the screen. Let me, let me see if I can flip this. There. So... I believe there's a supercharger in St. George. And that's, oh, well, it says it's 93 miles. So if I go to St. George instead of going straight to Las Vegas, and that's with their buffer, um, I think there's a little bit more elevation change. I might be able to get away with just 20 minutes, but I'd be kind of pushing it. And then if I stop at St. George, you re I really don't need to stay there long at all. There's a Starbucks there. I can go in, get some Starbucks, use the bathroom, and head out to Vegas. And that would probably um, get me to Vegas sooner than just waiting here for an hour. Now, if I was hungry, I'd go over and eat at the restaurant, and by the time I get done eating, I'd probably be good to go. So anyways, we'll go back to Vegas straight. So this is the new 8.0 interface. Uh, here's the new music. So you got your favorites. You got recents. Oh. The music. <laughs> um people were kind of complaining about the USB because it's a little bit, it's quite a bit different, but I don't mind it. it. It seems to work pretty good for me. 
Hello from Finland. Finland? Hi, you're on the wrong side. Yes, I get this a lot. Um, I don't know how to change it. The, the, the streaming software that I'm using is Wirecast Go, and it, it doesn't, it automatically flips the image. It does a mirror image. And I cannot find out for the life of me how to change it. And it's interesting, because you can set up uh, multiple views. Oops. Sorry, I was, trying, I was trying to change it right there. And I, I just can't, I can't figure out a way to change it. it. Sorry, I keep explaining it. But yeah, the video is like a mirror. I, I don't I don't know I don't know why they did it that way but for the life of me I can't I can't change it um, when it's doing the forward facing camera but it what I'm doing the back camera it's not flipped so the other neat thing I have is one of these Samsung 360 cameras and I, when I get to Las Vegas I think I'm gonna drive down the strip with it so you can kind of see all of Las Vegas all right uh, back to the news. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's 8.0. 8 it's rolling out worldwide now. People in Canada are starting to get it. Uh, on the Tesla Motors, uh, Tesla Motors Club form, somebody posted that they got it last night, and then it got rolled back to 7.1 yesterday. So that's interesting to see if that's going to be a thing. Like, uh, I guess, you know, there's been some complaints, maybe some bugs that they need to fix. So that, that'll be interesting. So this, this is some news that just kind of came out right now. Um, Tesla has announced that there's been three billion electric miles driven in Teslas. Three billion electric miles. So that's like, it's huge. <laughs> and that 222 million of those miles have been on autopilot. So that's pretty, that's pretty interesting stuff. Um, they're also announcing that during the last quarter, they delivered uh, 24,500 vehicles. And then they got another 5,500 in transit. So, you know, effectively they've sold 30,000 vehicles last quarter, which is record breaking and awesome. And, oh, hi! Somebody says hi, Pox. Hello, uh, West, West 101, West 101. Hello. <laughs> Again, this is live. Ask ask away um, on anything that I'm talking about. I'm killing time. I gotta wait here for at least a half hour. Um, I don't know if having a good conversation, I might stay with the whole hour. I don't know if there's enough. There's a lot to talk about. I haven't covered the news in a couple weeks here, so. Uh, Elon Musk says that this is likely the best quarter in Tesla history, which I'm pretty sure it is from everything I've ever read, which is pretty cool that they're selling so many Teslas. Um, good news so far is the superchargers are not filled up in Wyoming or Utah. <laughs> there was one other Tesla owner went up with a brown Tesla over at Nephi, which today, no more brown Teslas uh, and, and no more um, white. Uh, no more pearl, or no, they got pearl white. They got rid of one of the whites. Uh, correct me in the notes which one it was that they got rid of. There used to be two, now there's one. They also got rid of the brown. They also got rid of Model X 60 kilowatt option, which was a software limited 75. So it's probably Tesla saying, you know, they, they did the 60 to make last quarter really good. And then, you know, this quarter, they might be looking like they, they don't really need to push it as hard as they did last This isn't a, this is a, because they're going to be calling me back again. Just to give you a, a look, and I took it in for its annual service, and apparently that's a four year look, and I was like, my Tesla's leaking oil. It doesn't, yeah, three of them are leaking, the two fronts and one of the rear. And... You know, 750 bucks. I was like, oh, um, the the door, broken door, $700 or so with the mounting and everything. Leak, um, 
as long as you get it done in the next 10,000 I'm in Las Vegas or maybe in Salt Lake so I might have them do it on my way back through Salt Lake which make a long story short if you watch my video on cost of um, I just I just had a, a truck at my work a little magnetic thing in the engine that they got you can't really get them anymore and hi Captain Coffee <laughs> Uh, so Tesla's saying they're going to announce at the end of the month. So that's going to be a capacity option, or maybe just flat out the whole new... Um, it's an option that's very attractive. Um, they're, they're, I don't it'll, know, it'll still be able to work with the power wall. I pre-ordered, you can use my code. Um, it's all over uh, the Tesla truck, and I'm getting a jacket and a bag delivered. But I emailed them a couple different times. I have Teslas and referral programs. How has it been working for you? Have you gotten progress in Wyoming? There in Utah, I believe I'm taking the weekend off. <laughs> um, uh, would you recommend getting a Tesla Model S over something like an Audi? Apples and oranges. <laughs> if there's an electric Audi, maybe you might want to get an Audi, but um, I don't know if, if, you're, if you want the car for performance, um, I don't, I have no idea what an Audi's like. I've never driven one. I haven't looked them up. So I can't give you a recommendation other than you're going to get off the line faster with a Tesla, I'm sure. And uh, Tesla's going to cost more up front. It might be less uh, to drive around depending on how many miles you put on it. Uh, Tesla is going to have way more advanced uh, technical features like the autopilot system, the advanced uh, driver assist system, which basically steers the car for you you just gotta babysit it <laughs> make sure to take over if there's anything the sensors don't see but it, it's pretty cool it allows you to take over on um, it takes over on all the little mundane stuff of you know like steering the wheel <laughs> and you can concentrate on the road and um, just a little bit more relaxed you don't have to fight in the wind to keep control of the car it always keeps you centered in the lane it's really super nice uh, I would probably get a Tesla over an Audi any day of the week, but, you know, the, the cost difference depends on which Audi you're looking at. <laughs> Alright, so, more news! <laughs> Tesla is to deliver the largest privately owned supercharging station to a taxi fleet in Montreal, which is cool, that answers the question that, can you buy a supercharger yourself? And you can, apparently, you can, you can buy them. Um, if you're a company with deep pockets. <laughs> I had an interesting conversation, I won't say exactly with who, but a particular uh, uh, business owner in Wyoming, and they, they said that they're buying a supercharger station. Um, and it's, I don't know if they understand the difference between the supercharger and the destination charger, but he said it was three phase, so it must be a supercharger station. And what he was telling me was his cost was way less than what Tesla's been saying. They were saying it costs like a quarter million bucks to put in supercharging stations. And he was saying like 7,000. So I'm confused. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what what's going on, but um, it'd be really good to know the exact numbers. If any of you know, please put in the comments. How much does it actually cost to put in a supercharger? I know the electrical is expensive, and it can be very expensive to run to an area. But if you already have three-phase power and in the area for something else, it probably would be you know, less expensive. Um, I think the service, actual electrical service, is the most expensive part. I don't know how much the chargers are, because from what I understand, superchargers are like the chargers in the Tesla. They just stack them. So like we like mine has dual chargers, so it can do you know charge at a rate of sixty miles an hour, but the supercharger has like six or eight of them, and then it can charge at like three hundred and fifty miles an hour of range. So and then it just goes DC to DC. It bypasses the onboard chargers and it just charges faster. Um, and if they char if they're charging two thousand dollars per pack, you know, what was it two thousand times six? It's like just twelve thousand dollars in in chargers, but I'm I'm sure there's a lot more to it than that. 
Uh, Model S news. Uh, I just got an update. My car is ready to go to the next supercharger. So I can, I can apparently make it to Las Vegas right now. Let me, let me double check that because that, that doesn't seem right. Let's see. Oh, that, nope, that's to get me to St. George. So I can make it to St. George right now, but I can't make it to Las Vegas. So there's a sweet spot when supercharging. So when I, when I started out at like 50 miles a range, it was saying it was charging at a rate of 350 miles an hour. Um, can't, I don't remember how many kilowatts. It's charging at 60 kilowatts now. It might've been charging at 80 kilowatts or it changes the, the kilowatts or the voltage. They drop over time. So as, you, as you're filling up the battery, um, the amount of charge that's going in to the car lowers. So once you get up to that 150 mile range, I mean, it goes pretty fast up to 150 miles. And after that, it's a, like a, it curves, it falls like the charge rate. And when you get to, you know, 250 miles of range, it drops like a rock down to like, you're better off at, you're no better off than going to a level two station. And that la then the very last like 10 miles of range, you might as well just be plugged into a household outlet. Cause that last 10 miles, you can get up to that in like 40 minutes and then you might be waiting another 20 minutes for those last 10 miles. It's just the, when it, it um, it's like filling a glass and you're trying not to spill it. You just gotta barely pour the last part in. So if you're trying to get somewhere as fast as possible on a supercharger network, typically in my, my, my findings in my 500 or 55,000 miles, is to charge up to 150 miles and then go to the next charger. Because after that, you can drive to the next charger as fast as you want to and then charge up to 150 miles um, and then keep going because they put them 150 miles apart. So it works out pretty good most of the time. Um, I can stay here for another 20 minutes or so and I could bypass the next supercharger and I could go all the way into Las Vegas. So that's, that's an option I have. Um, and, it, and it may be a better option this time around because the one in St. George is a little bit off the beaten path. It's not right off the interstate. It's about five miles off. So you end up wasting about 10 miles to get to it. And it, there's some stoplights and it's in town. So you might be... You know, I might be wasting 15, 20 minutes getting to the charger in St. George. I might be better off just waiting the 20 minutes here in, in Beaver so I don't have to maneuver around in St. George to get to the supercharger. And then, you know, I'd still have to charge the supercharger <laughs> for like another 10 minutes. So in this case, I might be better off um, bypassing it and just going. So I'll, I'll take a look here. Won't remove my stops. Um, oh, there's another Tesla from Colorado. I don't know. If anybody's watching, vote. Should I go now? I'll keep streaming. <laughs> I got autopilot. Uh, let, me, let me check the news. Let's see here. I, I get all distracted. <laughs> um, oh, so Tesla's saying that autopilot doesn't mean autom autonomous because the DMV's uh, looking to ban the word, the use of the word, you know, autonomous or self driving or autopilot in advertising um, from vehicles that are vehicle assists that you still have to, you know, have manual control over. Is, is I mean, technically, these cars with the advanced driver assist that not autonomous, um, which makes sense. They shouldn't advertise those things. The argument is autopilot in aviation uh, on airplanes. Autopilot is the same thing. You can't just flip on autopilot and um, leave. <laughs> it just simplifies the flying process. It, it takes uh, over most things, but you still have to monitor it and be ready to take over at any second. So it's the same thing as you know, autopilot in the car. 
Uh, only difference is in the car, you got a lot more things you can hit. <laughs> if there's a deer in the road, which it might break for, but um, boards, nails, uh, potholes, road construction, there's a lot of things that autopilot can't account for right now. So you got to be ready to take over uh, bad markings, road markings. So it's something to think about, you know, is it cool for Tesla to keep saying autopilot when it's the the mindset of, of people is autopilot, it means it's automatic, you just flip it on and you can go to sleep, read a book, and that's not the case, um, either for planes or cars, people just seem to think that it is. <laughs> More Model S news. Electric GT officially debuts a modified Tesla S for its all electric championship. I've been, I, I want to see these electric um, race cars. I haven't really looked into them much, but I think they would be interesting. Uh, Tesla Loop. Uh, it's pretty interesting. They, 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 they provide a service from LA to Las Vegas, oh, where I'm going right now is Las Vegas, and they, they said that their Tesla that they give rides in has over 200,000 miles on it, and he supercharges it up to 100% every day, and the degradation I, is, I can't remember what it was, but it was it was like 5% or something, it wasn't bad, maybe 6 Um and they're actually going to replace his battery for another issue with it, I guess. Um, or they just did. But it was, it was just interesting to see. Because a lot of people worried that if you charge up to 100%, um, your battery will degrade. On my Tesla, it has degraded. It, it seems like it's degraded, but I, I don't know if I just need to reset it. Um, the memory on it, somehow. But it used to supercharge, or it used to charge fully up to 280 miles when I bought it. And I, the EPA rating is 275, so I thought that was cool. Um, now it's only getting up to like 265. So it's like 15 miles difference from when I first bought it. Um, and I've noticed it changes uh, depending on the weather. I think it kind of recalibrates on how I drive a little bit. Um, but I, it, it's just been since the update in 8.0, so I don't know if it's just reporting the voltage is different or how that works. If you guys know, please let me know. And I guess the biggest news in the past week has been the auto show in Paris because they've been talking about all the cars coming out. Every other manufacturer is like, hey, Tesla's doing it. And it's working, so we're going to jump on board with some long-range electric vehicles. And Toyota's there. They've got their um, Toyota Prius Prime plug-in. Uh, and it's interesting because it, it, it says it's got 124 MPGE, so it's like very efficient, um, both on gas and electric. And uh, I can't remember what the range is on it, but it was... It was getting more respectable. It was it was over 20 miles. I think the old one was like 17 miles. I think it's, it's like 25 or something now, or closer to 30, which is a little bit better for a plug-in. Uh, Porsche announced that you're going to have an ultra-fast infrastructure for the Mission E, and then it's going to be a uh, compatible Tesla. And they're talking about going like twice as fast as Tesla for supercharging. So if Tesla batteries can handle it, um, that would be really cool. <laughs> so that's good. That's good to hear that there's um, more charging infrastructure that's going to be out there. That's going to be level three, which is the DC to DC charging, and faster. Because the Chadmo chargers that are out are about half the speed right now. The uh, the fifty kilowatt ones that they only charge. Uh, on, in my case, is about 120 miles an hour on the Chadmo of range for my car and the Tesla ones they start out at like 350 uh, so that's kind of interesting it kind of evens out over time if you're doing a long charge a little bit more but yeah <laughs> 
Uh, Faraday Futures developing new battery with LG Chem claims the highest energy density in EVs. They do a lot of claiming. We'll see. Uh, there's some um, some cars and camouflage driving around. So there's some test mules. Be, they're going to be in Vegas, um, their factory. So it'll be interesting to see what they come up with. BMW green lights an all electric SUV and uh, the X3 and a battery powered Mini. Um, I think they're talking about a Mini Cooper. Uh, Mercedes announces all electric brand. EQ unveils SUV with 250 mile range. Generation EQ. Um, Ren A. Rene. Rene Yolt. Rene Yolt. <laughs> Sorry, I'm butchering that. But the. I haven't. I haven't heard of these. I think they're uh, more of a European electric car, but they are announcing a GT concept, the um, tre Trezor, Trezor, Trezor. Man, I, I'm really bad at reading these things. I'm sorry. Uh, they're also talking about a new 2017 ZOE with 200 miles of range and a 41 kilowatt hour battery available next month. So, tons of manufacturers coming out with electric vehicles uh, in the next year or two that are gonna be over 200 mile range. So there's the Bolt, um, there's this one I just talked about, Mercedes, BMW, Faraday, might be a little bit further out, Porsche, um yeah a lot of a lot of a lot of cars over there in Europe at Paris Auto Show Okay thank you for joining in if there's no more questions I'm going to let you guys go uh thank you for watching the last two videos uh please subscribe um and any qu comments below I also have a cool little button that says you can buy me some volts for my Tesla and Oh, I, I forgot to talk about charging. So if you've watched any of my Tesla trip videos, I've been going on and on about how there's limited charging in Wyoming. And Tesla says they're going to be putting more in, and they've been talking in different places, but a lot of places just don't want to pay for the electricity. It's not a lot of money, but they just don't want to do it. So I decided to um, step up and put them in myself. So <laughs> I've started up a little company called Wild West EV. You can go to it at wildwestev.com. And you can see all the towns in Wyoming that I'm looking to place chargers. And if you guys know of anybody in any towns in Wyoming that own a store, a restaurant, or an area uh, that, that are in an area where people hang out for an hour or two, um, shoot me an email, pox at twosmartguys.com. Uh, and you know, I can I can look about putting look at look into putting one there. I'm willing to pay to put in the electrical and the charger, and there'll be a little payment system. Uh, I haven't settled exactly on the price, but it'll be less than paying for gas. And that will help me pay for the charger. And then half of it will go to the host. So they'll get enough to pay for their electricity and a little bit extra. So it'll give, the, you know, whoever's hosting the charger the opportunity to attract people. I mean, you can look them up on PlugShare. And then they'll, of course, be our map that we're going to put online um, to come to their business. Because when you're driving through Wyoming... There's limited places to charge right now. So I'm, I'm looking at filling in the places where Tesla's not gonna go. Um, historic sites, tourism places, um, the smaller towns that, you know, most bigger companies wouldn't bother putting a charger. And I'm looking at putting 80 amp chargers in. So these will be, you know, 60 mile an hour chargers. So it'll be a much better alternative to trying to go to RV parks and charge at half that rate out in the middle of nowhere where you have nothing to do for you know, two or three hours while you're waiting to charge. So again, that's Wild West EV. Um, I'll probably put out more videos on that because it's, it's, it's pretty cool. I'm building, I'm working with um, EV Motorworks on their charging system and also Open EVSE um, to build the system for payment. Uh, I haven't got it all worked out yet, but I think it's going to be a very affordable system so I can put more of them in and uh, it'll be fast charging which is what I need <laughs> and other people need in Wyoming thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys again later bye